Welcome back. This is part six of my workflow with PixInsight. Let's get started. <clears throat> Start with the screen share. Um, our last uh, uh, part uh, five uh, had to do with the uh, use of cosmetic correction. Again, I apologize for not uh, addressing that when we did the weighted batch processing. Uh, I know it's well after the fact because uh, if you're following along then you've already uh, uh, processed your uh, images without uh, the cosmetic correction and I, I really want you to uh, uh, take uh, let's say one of your uh, images like uh, HA and, uh, and, and just load your HA lights and uh, and don't load all of them because the weighted batch processing system takes so long but load say six of them or seven of them and uh, and then <clears throat> uh, you should already have your master uh, dark bias and flat frame already created from having done this weighted batch process so load your masters which uh, means they've already been calibrated <clears throat> so you don't have to wait for that and then <clears throat> run a uh, uh, your weighted batch processing uh, and take a look at that uh, hydrogen alpha both with and then run it uh, without the uh, cosmetic correction and what you're going to see are hot pixels on the uh, one absent cosmetic correction and then when you see the one with cosmetic correction those hot, hot pixels for the most part have been removed so uh, uh, it just does a really good job of doing that and I highly suggest that you use Adam Block's template for that and thank you again Adam for that. Okay, we're uh, now going to, uh, 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 it, it, this is optional, uh, if you want to look at framing your image uh, I would start with the hydrogen alpha because it has the best signal and uh, before you combine your image you can uh, uh, do a uh, 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 you can rotate your image. Uh, I keep a process called fast rotation, uh, but I usually do this after I have uh, combined my images. Uh, but you can uh, apply this to each one of your images if you choose before you combine them. Um, but for me, it's just easier and uh, to do uh, afterwards. So we'll visit that in a minute. So now it's time to combine the images and see see really what we have. We've stretched them. They're still linear. Uh, we haven't made any destructive changes to them as of yet. But it's time to uh, now see uh, what our data looks like when it's combined. And you have some decisions to make. Uh, this is going to be a uh, an image that's going to be uh, predominantly hydrogen alpha and sulfur there's just very little oxygen data. I'm not really sure if I would have taken another six hours uh, that I would have a whole lot more. I would have more but I don't know that it would make uh, that big of a difference and you never know until you start adding additional data. <clears throat> but I have, uh, uh, if I had six more hours of, of oxygen I'd also have six more hours of hydrogen and sulfur and they're still going to be the two dominant signals so I, I for one think uh, my six hours is probably going to be enough to process an okay uh, uh, image. Now, uh, do I want to use the Hubble palette? Uh, I am going to use the Hubble palette, uh, but I'm, I'm not so sure that uh, because this is going to uh, uh, be so dominant that I, uh, if I use the Hubble palette, this becomes my, I'll map this to my green channel and uh, that means that my image is going to have a tremendous bias towards green as we start out uh, and then when you continue to apply the tweaks uh, and remove some of that green you start getting those pretty colors that you see in the uh, Hubble palette or you can uh, map your hydrogen to the red channel uh, which is more akin to its actual color and uh, you're going to have a predominantly red image uh, because the sulfur is going to bring in even some more different hues of red 
uh, the blue is going to be uh, pretty much non-existent, but uh, it will have some influence. And uh, so you can have the uh, 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 you can have any combination you want. You can just play around with that. And how do you do that? Well, one way is to bring up your uh, RGB combination. And uh, you can either use this or you could use the LRGB combination. Again, I save these as a process. But uh, you don't have a luminance channel, so you would uh, leave it unchecked. But for the record, let's just use the RGB. And <clears throat> when you do the Hubble palette, you map the red channel for hydrogen you map the green channel, I'm sorry, you map the red channel for sulfur, you map the green channel for hydrogen, and you map the blue channel for oxygen. So let's do that. I'm going to um, look for the S, and now the uh, sulfur will be mapped into the red channel. I'm going to bring the hydrogen in and map that to the green channel and then I'm going to map the oxygen into the uh, blue channel. Um, now, uh, before I do that, I'm going to share with you something that uh, I picked up from Adam Block and uh, I find myself using it uh, particularly when I have images that are so rich in hydrogen as compared to the other two uh, uh, filters images. So I bring up uh, show color in pixel math and uh, I'm going to go through this. Uh, what you can do is bring up pixel math and just enter the same uh, functions into uh, your pixel math and then you can save it as a process and you can reuse it over and over again provided that you name your channels HA, O3, and S2. Uh, again, the red channel is mapped for S2, just as it is here in the channel combination. Where there's a difference in the green channel, what Adam suggested doing, and I like that, is don't use all of the HA. You use 80% of the HA, so he has in parentheses 80% uh, times HA, or 0.8 times 8 HA, and he's going to add to that 0.2, or 20%, of sulfur 2. The blue channel is still oxygen 3, just as it is here. So it's this channel right here that he's going to use 80% hydrogen, and he's going to add again another 20% sulfur and map that into this channel. So what we're going to do is look at that. Uh, as That's my plan as well. And so I'll just run, I oh, can't do that, I'll just run, I'll click on this uh, box, or I could drag this process icon to my desktop. And so here we go. <clears throat> Voila, I don't need this any longer. In fact, I'm going to um, put my original files to bed. I won't be using those again. And as you can see, we have a lot of green. Uh, one of the things that makes this a little different than had we done RGB, RGB would have been less yellowy uh, and more and more more and more green, more and more more green. It would have been much greener. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's uh, just go ahead uh, and do this and we'll take a look at it. S for O, H for green, and uh, This is the RGB without the uh, pixel math. Hang on a minute. Okay. 
security. Let's get rid of this. Um, it's a subtle change, but uh, this one has more yellow than this one. In fact, this actually shows less. This is greener. I can see that this is greener, but uh, some images actually show a little more definite, a defined difference, a de defined difference than this does. So, uh, but this is the RGB image. We're going to go ahead with uh, the block special, and I'm going to call this SHO. Uh, and we also added a uh, linear fit, and we also added crop. And the only reason why I'm beginning to label uh, images is uh, I want to show what I've done so far in this image. Uh, I've taken the uh, Hubble palette. These images have had a linear fit applied to them. And, uh, and also the crop has been uh, applied to them. Now I'm going to make a clone of that by dragging, uh, clicking on this and just dragging it off to the side. I don't need two clones, but I'm going to make a clone and I'm going to put this to bed. I won't use that again unless I screw up this one. And I'm going to start uh, a, a new process and uh, when I start that new process and I'm done, I will make a clone of that and I'll rename this. Uh, I'll add a tag on, which is the uh, new process. So at this stage, uh, I'm going to run the uh, dynamic background extraction and uh, that'll be the next uh, part of our workflow. So with that being said, uh, I'll see you back here for the dynamic background extraction.